start with the next lecture, with the next lecture of the afternoon session. The speaker is Andrei Malutin. Uh, the rotation number, integer quantization effect in groups acting on the circle. Please. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And thanks to the organizers. I'm very happy to be here. And I, my talk is about the rotation number integer quantization effect. This is the effect that Viktor Matvejevich discovered and described in his works with his colleague, colleagues Tirtichny, Karpov, and Glotsuk. Yeah, and this is a really amazing effect. It, it's uh, the description is rather easy, so everybody could understand that thing. But by rotation number integer quantization effect, I mean not only that thing that uh, Victor Messier described with his collection in their works, but also a, a complex of phenomena that are uh, related to the thing. And in fact, you see that uh, it's like in a Newton mechanic and relativistic mechanic. So in groups acting on the circle and in partial differential equations on the torus, uh, there are some um, contraintuitive things that in fact uh, form some complex of uh, phenomena that are amazing and contraintuitive and in the initially, when you start to study this thing, you don't know about that. You think, that, oh, we are in Newton mechanics. Oh, everything is okay. Then, at some moments, you see that something, some behavior of objects is strange, a little bit strange. And then you understand that um, really this is some uh, riddle inside, some new phenomena. And uh, for me, this phenomena, a way to see this new layer, this relativistic mechanics in groups acting on the circle, was in that works of Viktor Matveyevich with his colleagues when I first time saw this integer quantization effect that was just amazing. For uh, rotation number, I had some lists of properties for rotation number, for break groups. So I, I thought that I knew about them almost all. Uh, of course, I felt that some phenomena I didn't understand completely, but the, I thought that the main things I know. And then the first time, uh, Alexei Glutsuk told me about that, not Viktor Matvejevich, Alexei Glutsuk come and uh, just give, gave, gave a talk about this rotation number quantization effect. I just this was just standing effect for me. I thought, yeah, really. I felt that something I didn't understand, but now I see that this is really like uh, Krylov fable. This is really an elephant in my flat. I thought that I know everything in my flat. Many just different things there. I know. But now I see that this effect, that something huge, something very strange and counterintuitive, I, and I, I never realized that it is there in my uh, area of research, this elephant. And after that, I uh, felt that it's this uh, rotation number into the quantization effect that uh, which and others, uh, this is just uh, one of manifestations of this huge layer of uh, large-scale behavior of these groups acting on the circle of PDEs on the torus. So it's really some new dimension for these uh, things. And after that, for some time, I tried to understand deeper and deeper how, what happens there. And um, first, I uh, on the five years ago, I described some uh, phenomena similar to that, that uh, layers of uh, elements in the brain groups with integer uh, 
rotation numbers are really huge. But um, and I thought that I uh, here I told about them something, but uh, three or four months ago, really after new experiments, we found completely new manifestation of this effect, and I want to. Uh, uh, without uh, much slides, just to talk about this new phenomenon. Uh, and I, I really, I don't know the name for that, but uh, roughly speaking, it's the same rotation number integer quantization effect, but another manifestation of it. And uh, even I can uh, formulate it shortly here. This is, uh, after that, I will give definitions, but first, I want to give this new result as, as, as it's uh, like a gift. For <laughs> it is uh, really strange and counterintuitive, like all other manifestations of this uh, quantization effect. So, see, suppose we have a group, finitely generated group, acting on the circle by uh, orientation preserving homeomorphisms. And suppose that this action non-degenerate in the sense that for any two points on the circle, we can find an element in our group that sends these two points arbitrarily close to each other. Yeah? So we have a sequence in our group such that under the action of the elements of this sequence, our two points will be closer and closer to each other with assembly. It's just uh, like non-degenerate action. Of course, if uh, the action has no this property, it's something uh, that uh, almost covers a proximal action, very specific actions, or it's just uh, conjugate with the rigid rotation, something like that. So it's the proximality of our action. You can think about it Sorry, I have to convert to one and the same point. What does it mean? If, it, if you can uh, send it converge to distinct, uh, with the limit, you can choose some one. So it just means that you can send any two points arbitrarily close to each other, proximality. So it's not just rigid Euclidean rotations. And it's not that something that uh, conjugate to group acting with rigid Euclidean rotations or something very homogeneous. So it's the uh, the requirement that the action is proximal is just the requirement like non-degeneracy of action. So let our action be non-degenerate in this sense. It's proximal. And then look, you can, uh, like an action, uh, imagine something that, I don't know, may, uh, the main elements uh, act like rotations, Euclidean rotations, and you add some new element, this with, say, hyperbolic on parabolic action, and this action may be very close to the trivial one. So uh, just imagine a group that acts some several element, acts with rigid Euclidean rotations, and say one element very similar to the trivial is just hyperbolic move to points are fixed and the rest are a little bit shifting from one point to other here. Yeah? And then when we uh, think about group acting like this, what is uh, a generic element, you think? A generic element, intuition, Newtonian intuition says that a generic element is close to some rotation, but it's a little bit distorted. But what the uh, integer quantization effect told us that really no, in fact, it turns out that when we consider uh, some elements close to the trivial one, indeed, in our group, we have a lot of elements that are uh, very similar, a little bit distorted rotations. But at large scale, and this is really counterintuitive result in this trend of quantization, uh, quantization effect, the 
uh, generic elements would be uh, hugely distorted elements with fixed points. So in such a group, at a large scale, almost all elements will have a fixed point. And this is, we can prove it through this uh, rotation number. And in fact, it's a manifestation of this integer quantization effect that I learned from uh, Victor Matej. So again, we had some finitely generated group acting on circle with orientation preserving after homomorphisms. And the action is non-trivial in the sense that it's not Euclidean uh, rotations. It's some, some bit distorted, so we can send any pair of points close to each other. Then intuition says us that we don't know what these actions are at global, but the new relativistic intuition with uh, integer rotation number, uh, quantization, says us that the typical element is a huge distortion of this typical all element of this group, typical big element, just distort this uh, circle drastically. It sends almost all points of the circle somewhere in very small uh, arc and with probability one in special terms with a random walks that Anatoly Moisevich Vershik learned us. Uh, the probability that such a random element have has a, a fixed point tends to one if we just choose elements uh, larger and larger with more distance from trivial one. So really it's uh, something counterintuitive. So typical element has fixed points in any non-trivially acting group on the circle. And now and now let's return to definitions and where we were the start of this thing. The starting point of all this research is uh, the usual rotation number, von Carré rotation number. It's very simple invariant if you have some orientation preserving uh, automorphism of the circle, we can lift it up to the automorphism of the real line. And for us now, a real line is just the universal covering space for our circle. And with help of this, we can define, like Poincaré does it, uh, such a limit for this sequence. We can thought about it like if we have some rigid rotation of the circle, we can think about it, the Poincaré rotation number is just the angle of rotation divided by 2p. And if we have some strange autohomeomorphisms of our circle that we have no unique angle of our rotation, but with this formula, with limit, of taking points further through, we, we will, we, it, it will yield something uh, similar to the average rotation of these points. This is a very old and famous invariant. It's uh, dynamic, and we uh, use it in two, uh, in two forms. If our group, uh, many groups acting on this circle, in fact, act on the universal cover, so we can lift uh, our action to the universal cover, such that it will be the group, usual group action, so some lifting exists. And when our action on the circle lifts to the universal cover for a fixed lifting, we can define this translation, Poincaré translation number. This is a real number. It can be large. Yeah? And when we can't lift our action to the universal cover, we just define, get some lifting for concrete element, not for all group action. Define this translation number and then for uh, as a real number and then just uh, take the small non-integer part of, part of it like 
a Poincare rotation number. So Poincare translation number is really translation, a big real number, and Poincare rotation number is its, uh, its part after uh, uh, integers. And uh, here are some properties of this translation and rotation number. In fact, if some group acts on the, say, on the real line commuting with the uh, integer shifts, it's the same like to say that the group acts on the circle such that we can leave this action to the real line, to the universal cover, then the resulting uh, function, so our Poincaré translation number, is just some real valued function on our group. And this real valued function, is, in fact, it's almost homomorphisms, on almost homomorphism. So the uh, translation number of composition of two elements, see the formula number three in the middle of the cell. Uh, the difference between the uh, rotation number of a comp uh, the translation number of a composition minus, minus the translation number of elements in the composition is not zero, but it's almost zero. This difference is absolutely not uh, uh, le uh, less than one. And uh, this just uh, examples of properties that uh, studied very deeply. And uh, in fact, they are something uh, not in that plane that the property that Viktor Matveyevich discovered. So uh, the property we need here, this quantization, is not so simple and you can uh, consider it like something. Uh, first, let's go further, and uh, when it's the, the following theorem, just like like remark, when we had some group acting on the circle, then this uh, rotation and translation numbers of elements of this group uh, characterize this dynamic behavior of the corresponding automorphisms. So what means to have an integer translation number or zero rotation number? This is the same as to have a fixed point. And what means to have some uh, irrational rotation or translation number? This means that the corresponding element having this rational rotation number would have a periodic orbit on the circle. So these numbers characterize this dynamical behavior. And uh, this is an example that, in fact, this jumps that our thing is not, homo is not homomorphism. So when we have a group and when we have uh, action, some action on the circle, and when we have this corresponding rotation or translation number, it is really close to uh, homomorphisms. But we can see that two, uh, that one in this uh, inequality really can be almost obtained. We see here we, uh, is the picture of two homeomorphisms of the circle such that each of these homeomorphisms had translation number zero. It had fixed points. And the composition of them will be arbit will have translation number arbitrarily close to one. So one shifts points along this circle very strongly. Yeah. And and the orange point is fixed. And the second, also orange arc is fixed and uh, moves are along this circle, uh, along this uh, blue arc with this arrow. And then this 
translation number of the first zero, translation one number of the composition is zero, and translation number of the composition is almost one. And this is a, a, an example how to see it on the level of just uh, graphs for these functions. The same as previous, but if you lift it to a uh, real line. And now this, uh, to understand this effect of quantization in the form that it is described in that papers of Viktor Matveyevich and his colleagues, uh, first, what we want uh, need to know is this uh, simpler effect of Arnold Towns. It's like uh, a rational quantization. Yeah? So if we have some uh, PDE equation on the torus, if it uh, Say we have some PDE equation on the torus. And suppose that we never uh, go like that, always move in one direction. So never tangent to this, always like that. Then our PDE equation will give us some uh, rotation of this circle. For each point, we can go along our torus and move to some uh, a new point and this will give continuous auto homeomorphism so for each pde we can compute this rotation in translation numbers and if we had some family with parameters some family of pdes with parameter and we move this parameter and for each concrete number of our parameter, we just found this corresponding translation number. And we see this, uh, at first glance, a little bit strange effect that uh, this is a graph. If we move our parameter, then the rotation number corresponding to the uh, resulting PDE we obtain will move a little bit strange. So sometimes we move our parameter and the uh, rotation number is stable. And these points of stability are along all rational values. So at first uh, glance, it looks uh, a little bit strange, but then of course you understand after a minute of uh, regarding this that of course, we have periodic points that are stable. If we have periodic point of some, uh, say, not rotation, but distorted rotation, yeah? of course, when you shift a little bit, the periodic points survive. Yeah? So we have this staircase. It's like devil staircase somewhere the term for that. So we have some PDE. For this PD with, with a parameter, and we just shift our parameter for each concrete PD, we have this corresponding rotation number. And this graph will have these uh, stairs because of stability of periodic points when we change our parameter. Yeah. And so this is not a miracle. This is some natural interesting thing. And here is the miracle. Here is the real miracle that if we, uh, in some cases, for some very special PDEs with some very special way to define parameters, we obtain the situation where this devil staircase has these steps only on integer levels. So it usually it has an infinite number, countable number of, of steps. At each rational level, we have a little step. 
And this is the first manifestation of this integer quantization effect we're talking about. And it was described in these papers of Viktor Matveyevich with his colleagues that in some interesting special cases, somehow all uh, non-integer steps in our uh, devour, uh, this uh, le uh, thing just disappear. And this is just like uh, what concrete on these pictures. It's just some things uh, how uh, when we uh, shift our two parametric, the two parameters there, how the value of uh, the corresponding rotation number, and we see that these gray things, uh, I guess these are integer levels, yeah? And in other areas, we have no these steps, no rational non-integer steps. We have something smooth there. Maybe not smooth, but something with, with no steps. So this is a really uh, strange thing if you know the behavior of this uh, translation numbers. But uh, at that level, of course, this integer quantization effect, not just obvious. We, it, we need some, uh, some time to understand what means all these pictures, what happens. And now we believe that we found these new interpretations which are more clear. Of course, we need to know what is the random element, ger generic things, and so on. But at least it's uh, clear in terms of just uh, fixed points. So now we know that this effect, this strange effect, has a, a lot of distinct manifestations. And in fact, this is in fact the same thing. So the thing is that usual intuition says us that uh, when some group acts on the circle, or maybe we have some family of uh, parameterized PDEs on the torus, then um, usually we see that, uh, say, for the group, you have the translation number is just the map to the real values, yeah, uh, real valued function. And usually intuitions uh, told us that, oh, it's more or less homogeneous. And in fact, the integer quantization effect says that no. With our poor low scale intuition, we think that such functions are homogeneous. And if we uh, just use the intuition of large scale behavior on such groups, we see that uh, integer values will prevail drastically. They just at infinity almost all became integer. Here, yeah? Sorry. What is on the, on the axis? Just to understand, on the axis. It's, I, I think this uh, pair of parameters for A and B. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. What is on the axis? In yeah. fact, it's short uh, for this A, B, uh, it's some functions. Yeah. And okay. in these functions, some inside parameters of this A and B here along the axis. Yeah. But I, I don't have a nicer picture. It's a picture from works of Victor <laughs> Matic. Yeah. 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 You can see it on the yes. axis. So, so you have the picture. What is the x x? You see, it is a v and the sorry. Okay. In the v. sorry. Here is v. v bias and amplitude. It is a, a yeah. and omega. It is a parameters. Omega is parameters. And uh, if omega tends to the infinity, you obtain the strings. When omega tends to zero, you obtain the packet. And when I show this picture to expert from Arnold School, 
the first reaction was, Victor, it is uh, impossible, your computer wrong. Are not here, yes. Here A and B is just numbers, not some functions with. Uh, no, no, no. It is uh, exactly in this equation. Ah, you see. I thought that it's, it's some work. functions of other. What's, let me explain again. I mentioned this. Uh, Joseph Sohn and other people using Ginsburg Landau equation, more complicated. Other people using the equation with second derivative. What we are doing? Uh, we consider nonlinear and differential equation of a phi with three parameters, three parameters, A, B, and omega. It is about my idea, consider this as the special family dynamical system on the torus. Because for me, physicists certainly don't use any method from uh, dynamic system the torus. No. This, any point of this picture, it is a solution of this equation. Okay. But it's, you see here uh, an integer, a finite number of levels, yeah? And if it will be uh, okay with old uh, equation, it looks like you see, on this picture, you see, we also see a finite number, but just because we have uh, pictures for uh, numbers with, uh, so for several rational numbers, but in fact, we, we should have infinity of these tongues. And in fact, if this uh, equation would be usual, then we will have infinity of these steps. And in this special case, we have only on this short picture, only finite number of steps know this infinite number of rational uh, areas for each rational number. This is the point. And just I thought that A and B, not just numbers, I thought that this is functions of some parameters there along calling, but it's... Uh -huh. Okay, okay. This is that papers from which this picture is taken. You see, it is a publication 2010, but first publication was in Jet Applied Physics because I consider this not not interesting for mathematicians. I think that we consider the interesting only for physicists. But in only in 2010, I decided to publish it and inform about this mathematician because mathematics. Involved with Victor is impossible. Uh, because Arnold Tank is exactly, exactly, exactly. But could you check uh, in the list of my publication in 90s? I published this in, in, in Jet, they published. It's interesting. In Jet, they published. But okay. Yeah, and what is the sense of this thing? The sense is that, in fact, we have some uh, phenomena that we uh, with poor visage on a low scale. And in these uh, concrete pictures, somehow uh, they, Viktor Matveyevich, with co-authors, -author, they manage to saw these invisible on low scale things. They manage to find something when we really saw it on low scale. So that's why it's very interesting examples, because uh, this prevailing of integer values on low school, we can see that, and some with very special parameters, we can, yeah. But what this shows to us, that if even and low, and in some of these low scale parameters, we can see this effect of prevailing of integers, we follow it, and uh, after some time of study, we understand that in, in really on large, this means that on large scale, these uh, uh, phenomena of prevailing for integers are global, of course. The problem was to see it at this short level. And now when we see that it works or somehow we can find examples when it works, of course we understand. When we 
in our say in our real life we found some example when we show something from relativistic mechanics then we understand that relativistic mechanic mechanics exist and globally of course it's dominate uh then i have some uh old results about uh braid groups so in some weak form we can uh, see the manifestation of uh this integer quantization effect on the level of braid groups but uh, when we studied that we found this uh, phenomena uh, which i started with then it turns out that I thought that uh, at the level of braid group we see uh, this phenomenon. That maybe it didn't, it, it couldn't work for all groups. But now we know that it works for all groups. So I believe that I should go to this uh, final result and just throw out. It's interesting, but it's not so interesting. Uh, these facts about braid group with respect to this new uh, thing. So I, just not to confuse you, I just throw that out and just jump to this new manifestation of the same phenomena of integer prevailing things. So maybe if I have more time, I just explain how it works. Yeah, have some more time. So, in fact, in order to uh, really prove this thing, we need the Hillel Furstenberg mu theory and ergodic theory. I believe that this phenomena really works uh, in metric sense. So, what it states, this theorem states that we have global quanti integer quantization phenomena in the sense that generic elements uh, will have fixed points in arbitrary case. But uh, what are generic elements here? Here, generic elements are elements that we obtain as a result of a random walk. What means the random walk? If we uh, just have our group, it's finitely generated and acting on our circle. We say if we fix some finite set of generators and their inverses, and then fix some probability measure on these generators, and then uh, compose uh, a, a long chains of generators, say we have some say, free group yeah, with generators x1, x2. And I just have x1 minus 1, x2 minus 1, just uh, through a cube with 4 and arbitrary choose numbers 1, this one with probability 1 fourth, this one with probability 1 fourth, this one with the same. So I have, say, it doesn't matter, but suppose it's just uh, this homogeneous measure. And then in our group, this is the Cayley graph says, I will obtain, uh, take some sequence, randomly generated, long randomly generated sequence. To this sequence, there will correspond some path in my group. And if I uh, see the the autohomeomorphisms corresponding to this element located along my path, then with the Furstenberg theory and with the ergodic theory, I know that the number of elements with fixed point, fixed points along my path, the proportion of the elements with fixed points will tend to one. So with this measure on the group, the measure of genericity, yeah, 
I see that random generic element has fixed point. But this is quite a subtle thing. So it doesn't, this theorem doesn't imply that if I have just metric ball in my group, then the proportion of elements with fixed points will tend to one if I will uh, expand my ball. So in fact, I believe that of course it's true now when nation affect more and more, we see that it manifestate in, in such a strong way. I believe that for metric balls, of course, this will also work, but I can't prove that. I can prove only with very specific case when I generate elements randomly along the fixed measure on the set of generators. So I, I see that uh, this effect works, but I can prove it only for very specific uh, relations for what is generic, what are generic elements. So a, a lot of work before us. So thank you very much. Thank you for the talk. Questions? Okay. Questions was during the <laughs> Андрей, большое спасибо. Я еще раз убеждаюсь, что хорошие эффекты просто так на земле не валяются, и имеется много-много притечей. Вот, Саш, Александр Петрович, я хочу рассказать, что было вот после открытия этого эффекта. Очень советую, читайте работы Андрея Николаевича Калмогорова. Уже после того, когда этот эффект был открыт, я нашел работу Андрея Николаевича 1939 года, которую я потом всех расспрашивал, и мало кто ее знает. Давайте я вам ее сформулирую. Как вы знаете, Андрей Николаевич Калмогоров был великий специалист по теории функций действительного переменного. Комплексные перемены его не интересовали. Его интересовали... А, вы... а, yes. И он, хотя и не тополог, предложил такой подход, как изучать функции вещественного перемена. Имеет... Ну как... там топологию. Очень важна. После этого Андрей Николаевич сказал, давайте изучать такие функции. Та же самая F, T. Что у нас получается? У нас была функция переменного T, а теперь у нас получилось однопараметрическое семейство функций от t с параметром tau. То есть переключите, вы... пожалуйста, доску на большой экран. Что? Ну, а что делать? Я предлагаю свапнуть презентацию. Сейчас делаю. Спасибо. Андрей Николаевич предложил рассматривать функцию f от t плюс tau как семейство функций с параметром tau. А это кривая. И он говорит, а что такое периодическая функция? Это замкнутая кривая. А что такое квазипериодическая функция? Это не замкнутая кривая, но и кривая, куда она матовая. Но в этой работе просто написано, вот правильный подход. Это я повторяю. Этот эффект. 
Теперь, как этот эффект... Что в физике? Физики не используют не торы. Они поступали замечательным образом. Вот то самое уровень, которое нам написал Андрей, помните? Говорили. Рассмотрим пространство решений этого уравнения. О, у нас же, кроме функции φ, есть частота омега. Физически это накачка, с какой мы накачиваем переход. Вот. А омега, как вы знаете, 2 π на t. То есть у вас есть параметр t. Физики говорят, давайте перейдем к такому семье. φ от тау плюс n от t. А n меняется. 1, 2, и пошло. Возникло семейство функций. Но где это теперь семейство функций? Это семейство функций... Проводятся вычислительные эксперименты. И оказывается, в зависимости... Это дискретная последовательность на отре функции, на отрезке либо расходится, либо сходится, но почему-то предел устойчив. Это физически интерпретируется, так вот это самое решение нам говорит о напряжении в точке перехода Джозефсона, это как раз интерпретировано как на захват парку этого Купера. Но как бы это ни было, вот возникла такая идея, и они стали эти рисовать. Удивительный образ. Посмотрите, вы берете, повторяю, решение и проводите такой вычислительный эксперимент. Вот это последнее. Сходится или не сходится? А вот если сходится, почему-то она не сходится к каким-то непрерывным вещам, она сходится вот как раз к дискретным. Ну и потом, вот, вот когда я сообразил, что надо то казалось, что она сходится ни к чему ину, иному, как констант фон Каре. Вот этим я горжусь. И тогда многие вещи понятными. Ну, и... Дело в том, что когда я это рассказывал в Горьком, в школе Андронова, то мне стали приводить много-много работ прикладных. Ой, сори, я говорю по-русски. Много прикладных работ, в которых фактически возникали аналоги вот этого уравнения, когда решались задачи так называемой синхронизации. Оказывается, каждый раз, когда вам физически надо решать задачу синхронизации, вы приходите к таким эффектам. Это вот знаменитый эффект Гантмак-Клейна, который вот то, что называется эффект, сейчас называется тот вот, Возникли результаты по total positivity. То же самое. У вас имеется много точек, и они, казалось бы, независимые, Но каким-то образом они начинают друг друга чувствовать. Печательная тема. Я все мечтаю, что когда-нибудь мы с Алешей напишем на эту тему большой обзор, потому что результатов очень много. Вот по... Okay, then we continue in uh, 10 minutes, the last talk.